guys, Gary Box here. I have a new product to showcase for you today. Um, this is something new from Molite. It is called the Rolling Scrim Flector. Now, this is great for in studio. It serves as a scrim, it serves as a reflector, and it also serves as a light blocker. You could probably use it outside, but I'm relatively sure if you have any wind, you're going to have to use uh, something like sandbags or an assistant to hold it steady. Otherwise, it's going to catch a lot of wind and blow over. But I'm really excited about getting this. I plan to use it in my Northlight window room. I'm going to show you several different ways that this can be used. So we got our frame put together relatively easy. I didn't even need the instructions. One thing that I would say that I would change if I were you is as it comes out of the box, these handles on the bottom crossbar point down and they're not very high off the floor. So they would easily catch on a fabric background or something like that. So I just unscrewed the handle and reversed the screw, put it up from the bottom so that the handle's on top. That makes it hit this top bar but these handles, if you lift up on them, they will rotate without screwing. So it takes just a moment, but I would recommend you flip those to the top side instead of to the bottom side. So we have our frame here, which is really nice. It's probably uh, six foot by five foot on the actual opening, and it easily tilts both ways. So it comes with three fabrics. We have a black and silver to use as a reflector. And then we have the white uh, scrim material, which you could light through or use as a reflector either one. Now, the way these work is really pretty simple. You've got little corner pockets and then little Velcro for the side. So let me make sure I have this straight on the right side. Yes. And we're going to hook on the corner. And Velcro the little loop around it. our scrim or diffusion material. So this light modifier has a lot of versatility to it. So I'm going to start by using the scrim and talk about some of the usage here and then we'll talk about using the reflector and the black side uh, probably in our window light area after this. Okay so the first thing we're going to do is use this as a scrim uh, to be able to light a subject with. Now the nice thing about this is you can basically turn this into a softbox and you can turn it into almost any size softbox. So we could do this with LEDs, which I'm going to use so you can see in the video, or you could use this with strobe. So if we take a look here, uh, I'm using a, an LED light with a Fresnel head on it. Uh, the Fresnel zoom is kind of nice because it can control the light and keep it from spilling over the sides of this. But if we have our light in close, it's like having a very small soft box on our subject. Okay, so we're going to have a little bit harder light that way, uh, but it's still, it's kind of hard, but it's not because we have the hot spot here that you can see, but yet there's a little bit of a fade out, which keeps it from being too hard. Now, 
if we back this light up and zoom it out a little bit, we can fill like the entire thing with light and the light will get much softer. So first I'm gonna back my zoom off on my Fresnel and then I back it up. And now the light has gotten significantly softer because now we're using the entire thing as like a large softbox. So if you've wanted a large softbox but either don't have the room or don't want to pay the price, this is essentially a five foot by six foot softbox right here, easily used in your studio. So this is one purpose of using it as a screen. You can even use this with direct sunlight if you're outside and have someone holding it so it doesn't blow over in the wind. But here's another great use of this. If you're doing headshots, you can actually put this behind your subject and light it. And now you have a very, very pure white background with uh, lighting into this. So I probably need to move it down just a little bit, but you can use this as a high key background for doing headshots or anything like that. And it's gonna work perfectly. I'd probably steam the wrinkles out of it. It just came out of the box, so the wrinkles are in there. But then you would have a great white background just by backlighting it like this. The fabric's a little thin, so if I put the light directly behind, you probably want to make sure that it's hidden by the subject because with the thin fabric, you're going to see that hot spot and that might be a little bit problematic in your lighting. So if we put it behind the subject, uh, we should be pretty good on that. So that's two ways that we can use it as a scrim, uh, as a main light or as a high key background. Okay, so let's talk about the height and the tilt of this tool. So at its lowest position, it's about seven foot, four inches tall. So you should be able to use this even with an eight foot ceiling. But it does have extensions that can give us probably another almost four feet and get it up to about 10 and a half feet tall. So, um, but it also tilts. Now the tilt is kind of nice because this can give us a higher lighting angle. So let's tilt, I'm gonna elevate this just a little bit here. And now we can turn our light on. And we can actually light directly through it from a higher angle. So this could be good for a dramatic portrait or especially good for commercial work if you're photographing food or product or anything like that. But we can take this one step further for portrait. We can actually take the light and move it directly in front of our subject and turn it flat. So I'm gonna elevate this a little bit more now. And of course on our image, we'd be shooting right through here not getting the stands and just focusing on the subject. Now using a boom light or something that's really tall, I can now take and position the light directly over them and I can have a butterfly light position. So let's uh, turn that brightness up just a little bit there. Okay, so now we have beautiful butterfly light. And just like when we were using it as a basic scrim, if we have the light closer, it's gonna be a little bit harder. If we put the light further away and let it spread out more, we're gonna get a softer butterfly light. But the lighting on this right now is just absolutely beautiful. So this might be one of my favorite uses for this light modifier. So I just wanted to show you a little bit about how the height and the tilt can also work to your advantage in the studio. Okay, so now we're in our window light room. We've changed out the white diffusion uh, fabric for our silver and our black. Now, we can use the white also as a softer reflector, or in the case of window light, if I have a really cloudy day, I could put a constant light like an LED behind it and bring my light level up and keep it from being too flat or too dark or off color or anything like that. So the white fabric is still usable here, but right now I wanna talk about the silver and the black. So we have the silver fabric and the opposite side is black. Now, some people will call it a black reflector or you can call it a gobo or an absorber, whatever you want. So let's talk about the purpose of it. So if I feel this out of the way, sometimes we want our shadow to be a little bit darker. Uh, right here we've got large soft window light and 
I want this to be a little bit darker on this side, but there's just light bouncing around. So I can take this black and bring it in to my subject like that which kills the light bouncing around and gives us a deeper, slightly more dramatic shadow down the shadow side of our subject. So this is a great use. Now, sometimes people use the black side of a B-flat or something like that in this same manner. So this gives us a little bit more dramatic light by taking away some of the light. If I wanted the light harder from my window itself, I could also park this in front of part of the window making the window light itself smaller and a smaller light source. So the black is quite useful uh, even if you think, why would I use black? There really is a good use. So now let's talk about the silver side. Silver is a reflector. Now, one of the things that people are commonly taught is that the reflector goes on the opposite side of the subject from your main light. So when we do that, we actually end up with some, we start getting some lighting problems because essentially we're now cross lighting. Light from one direction, light from the other direction. We start to pick up some issues like catch lights on the outside of the eyeballs. We start killing our shadow, which we really want shadow to show shape as long as it's properly placed, shadow is good. So uh, we're gonna get catch lights on both sides of the nose and things like that. So in my opinion, this is not the ideal usage for a reflector. But it's probably the easiest, which is why so many people teach it and do it that way. The more ideal position of the reflector would actually be to put it on the same side as the window. So we're actually going to take this reflector and angle it like this. And now you can actually see that reflector lightening, lightening the shadows. So now we start getting layers of light from our highlight from the window and then we get the reflector value and then we get the more shadow over here. So now we're dealing with three layers of light which gives a more natural and three-dimensional look to our subject. So typically I'm going to try to put my reflector in between the camera and the main light. So I'm going to reverse the camera for just a second and let you see what that looks like from the subject position. So from the subject's position, now we can actually see how here's our window, our main side, and the reflector is catching a lot of this. It's almost like an extension of the window, making our window bigger and wrapping around a little bit more. So this is why I prefer to use a reflector on the same side as the main light in most cases. So you might try it and find out that you really like the look. And you might start looking at some others where you've cross-lit it with a reflector on the opposite side and if you start analyzing, you might start to see some of those little flaws. Now, the softer the light is, the less of a problem those flaws are. But if you have a harder light, those problems are going to be much more noticeable. So, all in all, I'm really impressed with the versatility of this tool. Uh, this could make a great addition to the versatility in your lighting and give you additional tools to be able to work from and vary your lighting up a little bit. So, uh, relatively great price uh, coming in at just a little over $300. Uh, it's really a great deal. So, I think you guys should check it out and consider adding it to your studio.